that's cute. Good morning, Vicky. Morning, Tyra. Morning, Lauren. Look at this hair. Ooh. Hey, Alana. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Coffee Talk. So, I don't know if you guys are as tired of my bun as I do, as I am, since it's been in my head for three days, four days. Um, but I am getting my hair done today in Atlanta, so soon I will have good hair. Um, I am going to see Ariana Grande tonight in Atlanta um, because I'm a child and I love her. I don't care. But I'm taking Taylor and he's so excited. So it's going to be great. We're going to have such a good time. We, he and I never get to do anything fun. It's always work, 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 work. So this will be good for us. I want to jump right in here and tell you about an article that I read. Um, good morning, Jacqueline. I read an article um, yesterday and I wish that I could remember... Um, who wrote it because she really should get uh, the credit and I'm going to find it and write her name in the comments later. But she wrote an article about parenting and she used the metaphor um, about swimming. You know when we're, um, when we're learning to swim, they always say, look for the wall, reach for the wall, swim to the wall, look for the wall, right? And she was saying how parents need to be the wall for their kids because kids are, um, you know, they're out there splashing around in the world. They're having all this fun. They're braving the water and then they need to turn around and come back to the wall. So when they're really little, they go out kind of far, just a like, little tiny bit. And then they turn around and they come right back to the wall, right? Um, and as they get older, they swim out further into the waters. And she was explaining how so often our feelings as parents get hurt, and they do. And we are only human. And eventually we're like, okay, listen, I'm not going to be the wall for you if you keep crapping on me. And um, she was saying... Moms, you have to reject the urge to pull yourself away from your kids, to stop being the wall, to teach them a lesson when they're young. Now, I'm not talking about adult kids. I'm talking about kids. I'm talking about 18 and under. She was saying that children will hurt your feelings. They will say things they don't mean. They will reject you. They will disrespect you. They will test the waters. They will uh, try your patience. They will try to get between you and your husband. They will do all of these things, she said. And it, we are human. We have feelings. We... Uh, we feel like we, as moms especially, we give and we give and we give and we are selfless and we are selfless and we are selfless and we are told, I don't like what you made. I'm not eating that. After we've cooked, after a day where we've been working all day and we try really hard to make something healthy only to have everybody Um, <clears throat> only to have everybody at the table say, I'm not eating that. I don't want that. That looks gross. It becomes, it wears on you. I'm going to be honest with you. I love my kids. Okay. I love my kids. They are nine, eight and six and a half. And sometimes there are days where I have dreams about getting in my car, turning up the music 
saying I'm going to Target and driving all the way to Texas. Yeah, that's real. Okay, that's real. So, uh, it is perfectly, this is a very safe place for us to admit that some days parenting is the most thankless job. Thankless. I'm talking about days where you feel like, what is it all for? What am I doing wrong? Why does nobody listen to me in my house? Why do I have to repeat myself a thousand times? Why is my husband taking their side? Why won't they eat anything that I've made for them? Why is everything a fight? Why is everything a challenge? Why can't anyone just do what I ask them to do? Okay, if you are a mom and you've never had those feelings, you are the exception and not the rule. I would say nine out of 10 parents have felt, have had those days, have felt where your feelings are so hurt by the hurtful, crappy things your kids say and do. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Totally. They do that. Even though when I, before I was a parent, I was like, I'm never going to get my feelings hurt because I know what it's like to be a kid and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. I get my feelings hurt all the time. All the time. When I, when I kiss my kid and she wipes it off, all I can think is, I pushed, you don't know this yet, six-year-old, but I pushed you out of my vagina. Yeah, you don't know that yet. So my kiss bothers you? Wait till you find out that my vagina, it's not rockets, pushed you out into the world. Mm-hmm. I did that. Me. Okay, not Charlie. Fine. She was an emergency C-section. But the other two, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It Sometimes it is excruciating. Okay? It is. Sometimes it is excruciating. But the point of this article was... Um, to stay steadfast in your role. Don't allow their behavior to change your role. Okay? Uh, you are the wall. We are the... Oh, Charlie was a C-section, folks. I had my ad abdominal wall cut wide open for that child. Okay, I walked hunch over at a 90 degree angle for days for Charlie. I know all about the C-section, folks. I, I just forgot that that's how she was born because I'm tired. Um, the point of me sharing this with you is that I think it's a universal feeling that we all feel tested. We all feel exhausted. We all feel underappreciated at times. We all feel like what's it all for. We all secretly want to get in our car and drive to Texas. Unless we live in Texas, then we want to drive to the other side of the country, which might be Florida. Okay. Step parents, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, foster parents, whatever your role is, we have all been there. Our job is to be the wall. That's our job. Sometimes they kick the wall. Sometimes they take a shit on the wall. Sometimes they pee on the wall. Sometimes they spray paint on the wall. Sometimes they don't listen to the wall. Sometimes they turn their back to the wall. Other times they reach out for the wall. 
Other times they swim as fast as they can for the wall. Sometimes they hang on to that wall so tight we have to pry their fingers off the wall when they are crying and screaming at us to please let them stay on the wall. And we say, no, you've got to learn to swim. It is your time. You've got to learn. It is our job to be the wall. And I'm here to say, I read this article and I cried. I cried because it is so hard to keep getting up every single day and doing the best job you can when somebody doesn't want to receive what you are giving. When, when they are running around, they don't listen, they don't care, they don't appreciate. And sometimes it is hard to be the wall for somebody who shits on you six days a week and on day seven, they wanna hang on to you? Really? I should give that to you? After you have disregarded me, disrespected me, made me feel underappreciated all week, yet here we are in a public setting and you feel shy and you wanna hide behind my leg? The same woman whose kisses you wiped off, the same woman whose food you wouldn't eat, the same woman who you tried to get in between her and the only man she has ever really loved. But you want me to be the wall, right? I got to be the wall for you. After you have shit on me all week, I got to be the wall for you. The truth is, yeah, I got to be the wall. Even after you used me, even after you've disregarded me, even after you've broken my heart, even after you've hurt me, even after you've said things that children shouldn't say, I have to be the wall. That is my job. And some days, <laughs> some days, I wonder if they came to me before I had children and said, let me tell you about the wall. Young girl who does not yet have kids, who thinks she's going to give birth to a small girl who looks just like her, who's going to love everything she loves and they're going to be best friends forever and never have a fight ever. That was me. Let me tell you about the wall, Jamie. Like, Here's what it's going to feel like someday. Some days you are going to feel completely overwhelmed and you are going to feel like you don't have another step in you, but you are going to get up and you are going to make breakfast and you are going to pack backpacks and you are going to see your babies in the morning and realize you missed them while they were sleeping until you find yourself standing in the middle of the kitchen going, kitchen going, get your shoes. Where are your shoes? Why isn't anyone listening to me? Go get your shoes. Did you eat your breakfast? Where's your form? I need to sign it. Fill your water bottle. Put your book bags in the car. What are you guys doing? Get off the computer. Nobody's listening to me. And you're going to stand there going, I missed them while they were sleeping. I don't understand. What was I thinking? And the most amazing thing, the most amazing thing, you could drop them off at school thinking, I hate every single one of you. Go to school, go to boarding school. I hate every single one of you. And by three o'clock, you're so excited to see them again. How weird is that? True story. They come running out of the school and you're like, hey baby, how was your day? Same kids that you hated when you dropped off. Same kids. At three o'clock, <gasps> Hey, baby, you're the wall again. How are you? You're the wall. Till Charlie, first thing out of her mouth. Did you bring us a snack? Oh, no, baby, I worked all day. I didn't have time to get a snack. Oh, you never. Daddy always brings a snack. Oh, how quick I hate you again. Oh, my, so quick. I'm just keeping it real. There's going to be some moms out there that are like, oh, I never feel that way about my kids. I love them every day, all day. 
I'm the wall. I'm the Great Wall of China. I'm the wall Trump's going to build. I'm the best wall ever. Well, I'm not the best wall. I'm not. I am a wall, but I'm not the best wall. So, I'm just keeping it real, folks. This woman wrote this article, Be the Wall. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, 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 you, you, I've got it. I'm going to be the wall. I'm the wall. I'm the wall. Um, for all you moms who have ever felt like me, solidarity, folks. I love you. This is why I love you, because we have this dialogue, and they, I say how I feel, and you guys say how you feel, and everybody feels something, um, because toddlers are hard, uh, kids are hard, teenagers are Really and truly, there's a reason college comes after the teen years. God was smart in that. He went, you know what? I'm going to, teen years are going to be really hard, but here's the kicker. They're going to move out right after. Move out. It's going to be amazing. Thank God for college. There's a reason kindergarten comes after the toddler years. Because you put up with toddlers and then... Some days you're like, I, uh, I can't, my kids, real story. My kids think moms can return them to the hospital until they're nine. My kids think that Brookwood hospital has a return policy till they're nine. Mm -hmm. That if you disrespect your mother and if you are really bad, you can be exchanged for another child. Sorry. I know that's terrible, but my kids believe it. Olivia walks around going, I'm nine now. Mom can't exchange me. Max is like, I have another year. Mom can still exchange me. Yes, I can. So lock it up. Unless you want to go live with the Joneses. Okay? But the point is that we are walls. And not all of us are strong every day. Some of us have cracks. Some of us are old. I don't know. We have mold. And, you know, but we're still standing. That's the beauty of it, right? I'm still standing after all this time. Damn, I love that song. I just can't think of the words. Looking like a little kid. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be mom's theme song. That should be our theme song. If, we, if I ever get this retreat off the ground, that is... Our theme song. When we all first get together, it's I'm Still Standing. That should be women's theme songs everywhere. I'm Still Standing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, I just wanted to, um, to share that with you. Because it was a moment for me. A moment like this, some people wait a lifetime. I'm gonna post the. I'm gonna post the article. I'm gonna find it. Um. All right. I hope everybody had a great day. I am gonna drive to Atlanta after I take these nuggets to school. Please share this video. Somebody needs to hear it. Just hit that share button. And go. If you're a mom, if you're about to be a mom, if you have a mom. Um, oh yeah, looking like a true survivor, feeling like a little kid, I'm still standing. By the way, I wear the cutest sleeping bras ever. Do you guys want to see my sleeping bra or is that a little too voyeuristic? Well, the fact that my boob's sticking out is not cute at all. Actually, I'm not going to show you on Coffee Talk. <laughs> I just realized there's like men on here. I'm like, no, never mind. You have to go to Instagram to see that. <laughs> um, all right, hold on. Looking like a little kid. Rose Marks. Rose Marks, you are always the first person to share my video every single day. Don't think I don't notice it. You are my wall, just so you know. Um, all right, please share. 
click that share button. And if you want to see my sleeping bra, go over to Instagram where I'm inappropriate and show things like that on my Instagram stories. Um, it is Jamie P. Sullivan. Jamie, J-A-I-M-E, P. Sullivan. But share this video because somebody needs to hear it. I love you guys so much today. So much today. Um, yes, Amy Jackson, we are ready for the day. I love you. And I will, oh, Heather Mitchell, welcome. We're so happy to have you. We love, love first timers. Coffee Talk Virgin in the house. Thank you, Lexi Jane, for sharing. Thank you, Maggie, for sharing. Love you all. Have a great day.